It's been nearly six years since Sir Alex Ferguson retired as manager of Manchester United and what a journey it has been since then. From Louis van Gaal and David Moyes to Jose Mourinho, it's been a complete roller coaster. and 2018 under Jose Mourinho has been absolutely no different. So before we look ahead to our hopes and expectations for 2019 for Manchester United, that video is going to be out on the 28th of December, make sure you check that one out. We're going to look back at the last 12 months of Manchester United, the highs and the lows, and how we progressed or declined as a club in that year. But before we get into the video, if you are new to United People's TV, make sure you subscribe to the channel, get involved, join the community, a little bit of festive cheer, get involved. Now, let us rewind the year to December 2017 and see what was going on with Manchester United back then. 12 months ago, back in December 2017, Manchester United were 15 points behind Manchester City. That's pretty close to what's happening right now. We had lost to Bristol City in the League Cup. We had drawn three games in a row in the Premier League in December. It wasn't a good December, to say the least. So heading into January, United fans were hoping for an upturn. Now, towards the end of January, that's when a major thing happened. Jose Mourinho signed a new three-year deal as Manchester United manager. And it ended a long bit of negotiations because Mourinho was leaking things to the press and his agent Jorge Mendes, Ed Woodward and the board were leaking things to the press trying to gain control and power but ultimately United decided to back Jose Mourinho and give him a new three-year contract. Whether United fans were fully behind Jose Mourinho or not at that point, Mourinho is going to be our manager for the next three years according to this contract so now is the time to support Jose. But then in February it was the low point for Jose Mourinho in his United career, February and March anyway, severe. We drew 0-0 away in February, the return leg came in March, round of 16 of the Champions League, Man United beaten by Sevilla at Old Trafford. And for me, it still remains as the low point of Mourinho's career as Manchester United manager. Up against a team who we definitely should have beaten, they weren't good enough to beat us. Well, they were because they beat us, but that was because we just bent over. United were appalling against Sevilla and for me it was a major turning point in my trust of Mourinho because prior to that point I've always seen him as, as like a king of European football somebody who knows how to negotiate a two-legged European affair and at that point he looked like a man in the past a tactician who previously had worked wonders but had now struggled against Sevilla and that was a real real low point for Mourinho and then looking between then and the end of the season, you know, United did have some fantastic results. You know, we beat Liverpool at home, beat Chelsea at home, coming from 2-0 down to beat Man City 3-2 and stop them winning the Premier League against us. There were some high points, but ultimately we finished second behind a runaway Man City. And looking at the progression, United have progressed. We finished second, you're thinking, right, everything's set up for next season as far as that is concerned. There's a massive gap to close with Man City, but let's see what happens. So while it was massively negative because of how good City have been, we'd finished second above some decent teams. And there were signs to be positive for next year. But obviously we had the FA Cup final before then, and that was another game for me where Mourinho, a masterful tactician, was just outdone with his own tactics. Beaten by a Chelsea side under Antonio Conte, who scored early, sat back and held on to the lead. It was exactly what Jose Mourinho had done so many times, had done it to United as well. So for me, it was another question mark over Mourinho. We've had Sevilla, and then for, for that to happen in a cup final game, it wasn't a good end to the season for Jose Mourinho. And unfortunately for United, nothing really got any better in the summer. In fact, it got a lot worse. You know, we did sign Fred, we did sign Diego Delot, we signed Lee Grant, but Mourinho didn't get the centre-back that he wanted. And Mourinho cut a very, very frustrated figure in United's pre-season tour. He looked miserable, and that demeanour rubbed off onto the players. It rubbed off onto the fans. Pre-season was just a struggle the whole way through. The players didn't look happy. Mourinho didn't look happy. Stories were coming out in the press about United's board vetoing Mourinho's transfer targets. Harry Maguire, Toby Alderweireld, two players that Mourinho wanted and didn't get. It just wasn't a good way for United to have the summer and go into the pre-season. And that's separate from everything that was going on with Paul Pogba. Just won the World Cup with France. Brilliant. But his and Mourinho's relationship was in, under massive scrutiny over comments that Mourinho said about Pogba winning the World Cup and the attitude that he had there in comparison to United. 
Just all these things combined meant that when United headed into that Leicester game to start the 2018-19 Premier League season, it just United were not in a good place. But then the game against Leicester gave us a little bit of hope. Pogba came back a little bit early from his break in the World Cup, wore the captain's armband, put in a captain's performance against Leicester. United were flying in that game. Unfortunately, that was wiped out very quickly with defeats against Brighton and against Spurs. And the animosity that we had seen during the pre-season had compounded into this negative feeling around Manchester United. You know, the fans probably wouldn't have got on Jose Mourinho's back so early had the pre-season not happened. Had we had a good summer, signed the players we wanted, smiles all round, positive feeling going into the new season. Unfortunately, that just wasn't there. And that is why United were in such a bad position at that point in the season, right at the start. Of course, United then buried that ill feeling by winning three games on the bounce. And then you're thinking, oh, you know what? Maybe things are turning around. No, things were definitely not turning around. We drew against Wolves in the Premier League. We lost to Derby in the League Cup. We got spanked by West Ham away. And we drew against Valencia. Four games without a win. And a man who is under intense pressure is Jose Mourinho at this point. This is when a lot of fans started to turn. At this point, I'm looking at it thinking, I don't think the players are playing for Man United anymore. They're not playing for Jose Mourinho anymore. That's what it looked like in the 0-0 against Valencia. Manchester United were just lost at sea at this point. It didn't look like Mourinho knew what he was doing. It didn't look like any of the players knew what they were doing. And bear in mind, this is still early in the season. But United, I wouldn't say crisis at this point, but maybe we were in crisis. And certainly Jose Mourinho was under the most intense pressure he had been up until this point as Manchester United manager. And then if you look at what's happened since, it's been just a mad set of ups and downs. We've had big highs like coming from behind to beat Juventus, to beat Bournemouth, to beat Newcastle. Then you've got huge lows, like the Juventus game at home, or Man City. Just the massive amount of inconsistency we've seen in this United team was summed up in our response to then. And for United, that hasn't changed going into December, where we've seen some brilliant performances, marred by a load of shit performances as well. The yin and the yang. United are balancing out their good performances with bad performances, and it's just staying at this horrible stalemate at the moment. So, as you can see, I'm now wearing a different shirt. This is what you get for pre-preparing videos to go out over the Christmas break, because since recording the video, Manchester United have acted and sacked Jose Mourinho. Only 11 months after being given that new contract in January, Man United have sacked Mourinho. And it all came after that game against Liverpool at Anfield. Just as bad as that defeat against Sevilla in the Champions League was, that, for me, was probably worse. It was after that Liverpool game where I lost faith completely. That was the last straw for me, and I felt that Mourinho had to be sacked. And only 48 hours later, Man United sacked him, so clearly that was the turning point for the club, as well as me. And I want to say it was absolutely the right decision. Yeah, early this season, you'll remember, I said I didn't want Mourinho to get sacked during the year. I felt Man United should wait until the end of the year, end of the season, sorry, to sack Mourinho. I'll put my hands up and say I was wrong, because clearly now we've got an opportunity between December and May next year to re-establish our identity under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. You know, that's really going to be an important thing for Manchester United to get right next year to make sure that we can properly move on as a club. But in the meantime, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is manager of Manchester United in 2018. Who would have guessed and seen that coming? Absolutely nobody. You know, Solskjaer, for me, Solskjaer really can't fail in what he does in 2019 because all he's got to do, he doesn't have to finish in the top four, I don't think. All he needs to do is re-establish the identity of the club. Get that good feeling back among the fans and get United, United again. And I think he'll do all of those very, very easily. And I think it's an excellent appointment from United in the short term. Any longer than this season, I think it'll be the wrong decision. But between now and the end of the, end of the season, we've got an opportunity to re-establish ourselves. And Solskjaer, for me, is a perfect man alongside Mike Feele and Fergie's ex-assistant to make that happen. So what an end to 2018. And if you look at 2018 as a whole, largely consumingly low for United. It really, really was. There wasn't too many high points to talk about, you know, beating Liverpool, stopping City, winning the league against us. But they're minor in comparison to the likes of, you know, Sevilla, 
that Liverpool game, Mourinho being sacked, the FA Cup final, the pre-season tour, the misery and the miserable feeling among United fans for the large majority of 2018, that's what 2018 is going to be remembered for. But United acted decisively at the end by sacking Jose Mourinho and it was the right decision and after an overwhelmingly disappointed 2018, United can now head into the start of 2019 with a bit more optimism and a bit more positivity. And let's see what happens under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. But what are your memories of 2018? Will you be taking anything positive away from it? Or as I said, are you going to say it's largely disappointing as well? Now, I'm also going to be doing a video on the 2019-20 season. What are Manchester United's hopes and expectations going into 2019? Make sure you check that out. It's going to be released on the 28th of December. But what a way to finish 2018. Let me know what you think about the year as a whole in the comments. And if you're new to United People's TV, make sure you subscribe.